Hello, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Yeah, so that's the beginning. That's the introduction. Oh. <sighs> I haven't recorded one of these for a couple of days because I couldn't be bothered. No, it wasn't that. I've been busy. I've, um... My website, jasonnewland.com, is now up and running again. And I've just been busy doing some work on it. And that's the thing, because I've got quite a few websites. I have a tendency of getting a little bit obsessive with them. Um... A little bit not uh, obsessive, just focused probably is the better word. You know, once I start <sighs> it's a bit like doing a wee, you know, once you start it's hard to stop. Mid flow, you know. So I just I've just been really busy on it and the yeah, it's nowhere near done sort of what I'm doing is nowhere near done but the only reason for that and it's a good reason is because I've got so many recordings you know over a thousand recordings which means there's just it's just a big job a big jobby it is uh, so and to be doing that on how many websites have I got now I've got the main one jasonnewland.com I've got letmeboyutosleep.com I've got deepsleepwhisper.com I've got sleephypnosisweekly.com and I've got free mp3s <laughs> I think I think I think it was called free mp3s.com or three hypnosis mp3s dot com something like that do have another one which is a sleep hypnosis one but I've had trouble with the domain name trying to connect it to a website so i kind of temporarily given up on that one I've also <sighs> I've also been yeah I've got some other podcast um some other websites as well on blogger I've also got yeah I've been going through the podcasts as well just checking out which ones are up and running, which ones are working, and um, yeah, so that's a big, big uh, project on its own. So I kind of get a little bit caught up in different things, different aspects. I mean, realistically, the most important thing to do is to record more sessions. However, 
it's kind of makes sense to also make sure that the podcasts that I have are available for people to listen to because without that there is well it's not there's no audience because there's always an audience um but there'd be less you know there's if I sort that out there'll be a larger audience which I did um a few days ago I I contacted a podcast and got them to or podcast host and got them to change the RSS feed which is the feed for the podcast to update it and they did and I had a spike of downloads so it's you know it's it's just there's a lot involved in this so much more involved than I think um perhaps it seems from the outside because it might I mean it might just seem like I just talk rubbish for an hour which I do I'm not I'm not ignoring that it's true so I'll talk rubbish for an hour and then just that's it but there is more to it there's there's uh, yeah there's a lot more going on behind the scenes just like with a website you might go to the website and like let's say go to jasonnewland.com just have a look at it and just think well that looks the same as it did a week ago but it's behind the scenes work that's being done it's uh, I kind of think of it in the sense of I've got this big big um, like a big big building and I'm just putting in lots of windows continuously putting windows in so that people can see in and little doorways that people can enter from different places so it's uh or growing roots maybe you know letting the roots spread and or building tunnels I'm trying to think what kind of analogy I could have so it's all like starting at the top and building down digging down and spreading spreading the, the love and trying to connect with people from on various different podcast platforms and different countries and yeah there's quite a bit involved it's um, some of it is very tedious it's very boring it's even more boring than the way I, I talk about it it's just like ah like copy paste copy paste copy paste it's just and I do that a thousand times but it's all worthwhile and you know sometimes you know, let's say a blog post so I've got these podcasts they're blogs but they're on the website they're you know I'm posting them on the website but Google might not discover them for a few months hopefully earlier but you know some of them might not be discovered for a while and then traffic will start coming in to those pages so it's I've actually got probably a couple of thousand pages on my website but if you look at it there's probably about four pages to look at so there's lots of different uh, things going on I'm like Fraggle Rock, if you remember that TV show. Like Fraggle Rock, continuously building. And the Fraggles are coming along and start eating the bridges. And But other than that, it was good. So 
so I had a little bit of excitement this week. So I've got a lovely boring story to tell you. So what was it? Not yesterday, but the day before. So it's Friday today. Yesterday was Thursday. The day before was Wednesday. So Wednesday, I... What did I do? I went out to get some food. Yeah, because Andre's food had run out. So I went out to get some food, not just for him, because I also eat. And I don't know what time it was. I think it was about four o'clock maybe half past four yeah I think it was oh I do think it was so I was I had a bath because I oh, just I need I need to buy the bath some flowers as well Oh, that poor bath. But yes, yeah, so I had a bath to get rid of the stink. I can't blame it all on Andre. You know, I pr produce my own smells as well. So, so I had a bath to get rid of that. And uh, probably lost about half a stone in dirt, which is nice. And so I... I do just normal normal thing I ran the bath but it was why do we call it running the bath there's no running involved is there if anything baths are for lazy people <laughs> showers for people that like to stand up baths for people that are well Maybe you can't stand up or don't like to stand up. Mind you, if you can't stand up, it's you have having like a like a wet room, I suppose. Because getting in and out of the bath is not it's not easy. It used to be a lot easier when I was lighter. When I was slim, or to be fair, when I was slim, I used to just float to the top, and I just roll out of the bath, roll over, and I'd be out. You know, I have to stop myself floating to the ceiling. I was so light, but now it's oh, I get stuck. I was like, I don't get stuck because if I was stuck in a bath, I wouldn't be able to make this recording, and it'd be in the news, wouldn't it? I'd like you know, the fire service having to lift me out by a crane. That's that's never happened, and I'm never going to be. I'm never going to be that kind of size, hopefully. But no, I don't, I don't think I've, I don't think genetically I could. I don't think so. But it's, who knows? I mean, I remember I'm, there was this girl. When she was a girl, she was young. She was sixteen, uh, and she was my friend's friend's daughter, or something like that. So I was visiting my friend and this 16 year old used to come round and I don't know why she came but she used to come round and she was friends with my friend who was an adult and she was this littlest female I mean she was a woman but you know she was an adult but kind of she was little she was like four foot four two probably that wasn't about size but she was just little everything about her was just you know, little hands everything and I guess little feet I didn't really never saw her toes she might have had massive toes I don't know but um, 
and I just it's making assumptions isn't it I just assumed that she'd always be little just she had like genetics that meant she was going to be little forever I don't mean short but just generally petite and then she got pregnant and you know the only way I can describe it and I'm not I'm not being rude because she's a lovely lovely girl and everything you know popcorn You know how little popcorn is, you know, before you actually heat it up. All I can say is, I think she must have swallowed a bunch of popcorn seeds and someone, someone put her into a microwave oven for a couple of minutes. She just exploded and... And I said, I don't care what size people are, but I was just so surprised at how quickly she expanded from being this tiny little thing to um, just, you know, it's, it's a, a popcorn. It's, <laughs> again, it sounds wrong, doesn't it? I don't mean it in a bad way. Um, because I'm overweight so I, I, I'm not judging anyone but I just still remember that it's like how it's a probably just makes you think it's the first time I, like, I'm not I'm not saying she was like an elephant but I'm just saying the first time if you was to see an elephant for the first time <laughs> or a hippopotamus Again, I'm not comparing it to that because she was lovely and she's a human. She didn't look anything like a hippopotamus. But <sighs> it's just like, wow, I don't. This is. I've never seen um, an elephant before. It's like, wow, what is this? This is amazing. It's like. And that was a little bit like when I saw her after she'd given birth well it wasn't just after she gave, it was like a year later I saw her so I hadn't seen her for a year and she came in and I thought well to be fair they said uh, or Tammy I think her name is Tammy or Bobby or something um my friend said oh Bobby's come round in a minute I said oh, where is she now she said I had the front door open I looked round and she said uh, oh so I can see her and she said oh she's the other side of the road she'll be over in a minute I said no she's not she's on the doorstep and my friend came out to the door I was standing just in front of the doorstep and she said no no she isn't she's She's the other side of the road. I said, no, she, she's not. She's just there. <laughs> no. That'd be her way around, wouldn't it? Anyway, yeah, so she was... It was. I mean, it doesn't matter about size; it makes no difference. But remember the Oompa Loompas. Remember when the kid ate the the was it the, the chewing gum? Oh yeah, I can hear. I saw. It was like strawberry, strawberry fruit cake. Now and mm, mm, it was it was like muesli. Mm, was that tripe? Mm, tripe, tripe, yummy tripe pie. Mm. Mm, that's no, no raspberry. 
and then you know she became memory card became massive and turned blue and that's kind of what happened to her she didn't turn blue although I do fear that if she doesn't lose weight and she'll turn blue a lot quicker than she needs to but it's just it's that kind of level of gravity it's, I don't know just she seemed shorter somehow if she'd have been six foot oh, she'd have been like about 40 stone but it's weird that you never know what, what the body's going to do that's the thing see if you'd have seen me when I was 16 I was skinny 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 and then if I'd have ended up this size at 17 so if you didn't see me for a year and then I walked up to you and I was like instead of being eight and a half stone suddenly I'm 15 stone or whatever it's like oh, what the heck's happened to him where's that skinny boy gone why's he got a grey beard oh, that, okay that would be and yeah that would be far away wouldn't it no, she's a, I can see her, she's a mile away. No, she's not, she's on the doorstep. No, but she's... Oh, no, she's on the doorstep. I don't know, I'm trying to think visually. Hmm. I don't know how I got on the subject of her, but... She was saying she was lovely. It's, um, still is lovely no no doubt about that and just thinking it's just an example of how the body can change you know the bloke I worked with and I'd stopped working with him and he was always like quite slim full head of hair and I saw him like a year later, not to the day, but long enough for him to have a baby. And I see him and he's walking down and he just completely changed his appearance. It, um, again, I mean, he didn't actually physically give birth, which was kind of my question. Like, did you actually have to give birth? Is that what's happened? And, but his whole body, he looked like he was pregnant, and his hair had decided to leave him. It's like in a year. It's amazing how things can change. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with anything. I don't even know what I'm talking about. It. It's, I used to be so slim I used to be embarrassed I mean I was skinny it wasn't slim it was skinny it was embarrassing I could not put weight on I couldn't I tried everything I didn't try everything because no one has ever tried everything we're not alive long enough to try everything so anyone that says well I've tried everything they're lying liar liar pants on uh. so I but I did try a few things one was the 
optimal diet for bodybuilders. So I was eating a bodybuilder's diet. Lots of food. Regularly. Every few hours. Nothing. Seriously, nothing at all. Could not put weight on. Very frustrating. You know, it's like I was having like an omelette and uh, like a, what's that ham steak you have? What's it called? forget what it's called but it's like thick ham but you, you, you fry it and I used to have that and this, you know I have chicken and fish and just eat pasta you know all, all day nothing couldn't put an ounce on me if I ate like that now I'd, mind you, it's quite healthy food, so it might do me quite, might do me good. But if I ate that regularly, I would be. I'd have to be going to the gym twice a day to cope with it. I did think about that. I did think maybe. Because now I'm getting older, you know it's. Maybe it's time to start experimenting and taking a few chances. And maybe I could look into the getting a bit more muscular and maybe doing it like going down the bodybuilding route and seeing if I can, obviously not professional bodybuilding, but just to see what kind of body I could get myself into, what kind of shape, because I've done all right in the past. I've, when I was boxing, I used to go boxing twice a week at a boxing gym. And so when I was about 40, 38, 39. And I, I think I definitely lost I'm not sure if I lost weight, but I lost girth. So my midsection slimmed. I got a lot more muscular, like in my upper body, my shoulders, my chest, my back. And because I had a punch bag outside as well, so I used to work on that. And I'd use the weights. So for every day, for about an hour, I'd alternate between doing weights and getting on a punch bag and so I really kind of toned me up so I was kind of quite pleased I felt quite strong at that time and I was also fairly heavy but I don't know how much weight I lost but I think at that time I was 13 and a half stone in 2007 that's the weight I was walking around at and then I put weight on and I went up to about 14 and a half or I 14 stone 14 and I was like shocked at how heavy I was because, you know, my ideal weight for my height is 11 and a half stone. Or 11 stone. 11 and a half. 11. 11 and a half. And that's for 5 for 8, which is what I am. But 11 and a half stone. Now, if I got down to that weight, I would be skinny. I would look... Because I'd have to, once I got rid of the fat, I'd have to start getting rid of muscle. I'd have to start losing muscle to get down to that weight. So I think this 
probably never going to happen. It's uh, well, I might do wonder. So eventually, I will. Obviously, we all lose a lot of weight at some point. But I just hope that I'm not bothered about the amount of weight I am. It's the ratio, isn't it? The fat, fat body ratio, and the uh, cholesterol levels and all that stuff. So I don't know, I'll just see what happens. I'd like to get my stomach a little bit, well, quite a bit slimmer, actually. I'd like to lose probably, ideally I'd like to lose about 10 inches off my waist. Possibly never going to happen. Because, you know, I was 27 inch waist when I was 16. The chances of ever being 27 inch waist was possible, but it's, it's unlikely. Although, back in 19, no, 2006, no, 2004, I was a vegetarian for a year. I also didn't smoke, do anything at all, including alcohol. So I didn't do anything recreationally, socially, or anything. Just basically, I was still eating chocolate until, yeah, I was still eating chocolate. Um, but I wasn't, you know, the rest of it was just vegetarian stuff. But I was working out, and I was I was doing I was doing uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu a few times a week, and I just with the diet and the working out, I lost weight, and I did actually get down to about eleven and a half stone. But again, that was in 2004, and I wasn't 13 and a half stone then. I'm a lot heavier now, anyway, but uh, I don't know what I am now. Uh, last time I weighed myself, I was 95 kilos, which is, I don't know what it is. So it's, but I was 106 kilos no I was 100, 101 kilos in February and two weeks ago I was 95 kilos I would say I possibly the same or maybe lost a kilo maybe put a kilo on but it's it's going to be one of those I'm either lost or, or added or stay the same one of them and I think um, I don't know whatever I, I know in 2004 I got down to about eleven and a half or eleven stone, which means I probably lost about a stone and a half, maybe a stone, a stone and a half, because at that time I couldn't have been more than about twelve, twelve and a half. Maybe I was thirteen stone. I don't know. I don't think so though. It's hard to know. I never weighed myself then. But uh, all that exercise and the movements, using the different muscles that I wasn't normally using, especially lots of kicking as well. But kicking, punching, punch bag, sparring, um, and also with the I was eating food that was basically just going straight through me so it was because it was vegetarian food so it wasn't 
a lot of the vegetarian food that I was eating was processed, like ready meals. So they weren't great. Uh, so I was just basically, yeah, lost weight. And I started a new job in August 2004 in a call centre. It was the second insurance job that I had out of three. And I remember standing up. It's really weird. I don't know why I remember this, but I remember standing up and I remember exactly where I was in the room. And if you walk into the sales room, there was, what's that, one, two, put out five rows of tables on the left and one row, big row of tables on the right. And I'd only just started there, so this was the August, so we're probably looking at September when this happened. And I was standing there and I was right in the corner right the other side of the room because that's where the trainees were sitting so after training that's where the the new people would sit together uh, for the first few weeks and then they'd be dispersed amongst everyone else so I was there with how many people were in my new team There wasn't many. There wasn't many. There was only like three or four in the training, which is a bit rubbish. But it's nice if you're going to do training. It's nice to have a big group because you kind of. It means when you go onto the floor, when you go into the sales floor or into the office, you already know maybe twenty people or twelve people. And that's a great start, you know. So you've had training for two weeks or three weeks with these people. So you're not on your own. But if you're only training with three people, you might as well just be on your own because they'll be sitting somewhere else. So, you know, if you've got 20 people, there's a good chance that you might be with sitting near at least one or two of them. Anyway, I remember sitting there. Well, no, I remember st I was sitting there and it was quite an empty office. And I think it was in the evening because there was different shift patterns. And it was summer, so it was like September time. I remember st just standing up and slowly putting my hands down the front of my trousers. And just stroking my belly. You know, just where the, you know, the the bit where the, not it's not elastic, but where the, the front of the trousers attach. Like where the belt would go. And, you know, and if you take your trousers off, sometimes you'd, there'd be a mark, wouldn't there? A, bit, a little bit of a mark left on your skin where your trousers have been. Well, I kind of explored a little bit and I just noticed, and it was really weird because I knew I'd lost weight and everything, but for the first time, I'd noticed just how slim I was. And I kind of put my hands down and just stroked, just probably just, it just blow my belly button where the trousers were. And I could get my hands underneath the trousers easily. And they were loose. And my tummy was just flat. And I could tense, and I was muscular, and I could tense the muscles. And I thought, wow. I was quite impressed with myself. It doesn't happen very often. But I thought, ooh, this is nice. This is like. 
I just felt slim and fit and it was the first time for years and years and years that I felt that way because in, what was it the last time I, well, I put weight on started putting weight on in 2000 so it had been like four years since I was slim and even then I wasn't although I was slim I wasn't um, the last time I was that kind of slimness would have been I think it would be Nineteen ninety-eight, maybe ninety-nine, like ninety-eight slash ninety-nine. I went through this phase where. It wasn't that I was overweight at all because I was still in a position where I wanted to be heavier and I was walking around probably 10 stone maybe 10 and a half probably 10 10 and a half something like that which was really light it's just like oh this is ridiculous I wish you know why can't I be bigger I really wanted to be bigger so um, even at late 20s my metabolism was still fast and I thought I was destined to be skinny all my life although at that point I wasn't skinny I was slim but I felt skinny just self conscious you know I was going, still going to the gym for years I went to the gym had little, my little muscles you know but I mean, technically, I could have took my top off and not been embarrassed at all because it was just, there was nothing wrong with the way I looked, but I'd, I suppose there is now, but you know, back then. But I didn't like it. I wanted it to be big or bigger. Well, I got my wish when I stopped smoking in 1999. December because within three months I'd put on well I had a belly basically within three months I had a belly and I just I went up to 12 and a half stone I suppose yeah it's about 12 and a half from like 10 so I'll put at least two stone on anyway. You know, about three months. And, uh, yeah, it was, kind of went downhill from there, really. I never quite, uh, until 2004, I never managed to, get it kind of back to being at least like a slim stomach <clears throat> but I think what happened is over time my body kind of got used to the weight and it kind of distributed it a little bit so it's uh I'm kind of like a a human shaped popcorn now popcorn and um, this will be the exploding popcorn story <clears throat> my throat is a bit coffee today for some reason <sighs> uh, so what else yeah 
I remember the first time I noticed that I put weight on. So I didn't really take much notice of it. And I was working. I was just doing this thing. And I had to go to the garage to get a cake. Basically because the there was no cakes left for the customers or whatever. So anyway, I'm running to the garage with the manageress. And I had to stop and I started laughing. And she stopped and said, what? I said, she said, are you out of breath? I said, no, no, it's not that. She said, what is it? She said, I said, something's happened that's never happened before in my life. She said, what? I said, my belly wobbled. My belly has never wobbled, ever. I've never had a belly to wobble. And now running, my belly wobbled for the first time in my life. And she couldn't stop laughing for some reason. Um, and we forgot all about the cake and decided to go on holiday to Spain. No, we didn't. And uh, so, yeah, it was just, I found it funny, but at the same time, when I wanted to put weight on, that wasn't really what I wanted. I wanted it to be muscle, you know, I wanted it to be, I suppose, more how it is now, but without a belly. Anyway, I, what did I do then? Yeah. 2004 Oh yeah, what I did In 2000 and No, 1998 I think it was 98 or 99 It might be 99 I decided to try and experiment because I was um, dating let's say let's use the word dating quite frequently at that time so I've decided to try and make my body look a bit better you know um, because although I was still slim I didn't have the the muscle tone that I previously had had because I hadn't been to the gym for a while so I started this thing so it was just an experiment and I decided to do press ups and sit ups I got a press up board which I bought no, a sit up board rather and I just did press ups you know just on the floor and I did one extra each day So I think I started off with like one, one press up, one sit up. That's a brilliant way to start because it's like, don't care about tomorrow, I've just done one and tomorrow I've only got to do two. And each day I added an extra one one press up and one sit up and I kept a track of each day and how many I'd done and I counted them out and all that stuff I did this for a hundred days and I got so muscular and not like bodybuilding but just you know the chest muscles being able to just the muscles would just like do their own thing, you know. And I was slim, but like I don't know about six pack, but it was slim. Probably I'm a bit hairy, so there might have been a six pack under there. I'm never sure what's quite going on. You know, as long as me, uh, as long as my belly button's clean, I kind of that's all I care. It's not all I care about in the world, but. 
I just don't want to have a smelly belly button. It's one of those things. I mean, luckily, well, not luckily, but I don't. It doesn't really go in a long way. I don't need a cotton a cotton bud to sort of get inside the belly button to clean it out, but it's yeah, it's still get off on my tool about my belly button. These recordings are really boring. They're boring for me. They're boring. So boring. <laughs> they really do live up to their name. And what's weird, I went from having in in the club, the nightclub that I was frequenting. Instead of it being like a, a mutual kind of conversation and sometimes women talk to me, sometimes I talk to them. I was actually having women coming up and asking me to dance with them. Because I looked, my body looked good. And it wasn't just that, I bought some clothes to show it off. So I bought this little top. It was ridiculous, really. It was a little black top. And I was just... I looked, my, my muscles were bulging out of it. So it was probably too small for me, really. But it was... It, I couldn't do it now because my belly would just be, like, popping out. Like a little whale in the ocean. But... It's like even members of the staff, when I when I walked in with his top, I was like, "What have you done? What's happened to your body?" So it was like, it's really nice. I don't know why I didn't keep it up. Got these little trousers to show me bum off. Well, not show me bum off, but like quite tight. And what's really weird is a few months later, I stopped smoking, and I just became, well. Popcorn. That's the new. <laughs> that's the new term for putting weight on popcorn. I became popcorn. That's so it's it's weird, and I've done that. The old. Uh, 100 days press up sit ups I've done it I did it again in 2004 part of my like training so it worked there I did it again in 2010 I think so yeah it helped no not 2010 2000 and Eight or two thousand nine, maybe two thousand eight, maybe two thousand nine. One of them. It didn't work as well, and I wasn't as motivated. And I don't think I've tried it since. And I know if I did, I'm pretty sure it would work because once you get past the uh, thirty or forty press ups. Because sit-ups are easier, actually, than press-ups, I find. Because although I may have a belly, I've got... The muscles are still in there. The muscles are still, you know, in the, in the stomach. <laughs> a very different shape to maybe what they was. They stretched out a little bit, but they are there. And... Um, but press ups with all the extra heavy, the body weight, it's a lot harder than if you're 10 stone doing press ups, it's a lot easier than if you're 15 stone. It's, well, I just thought it would like so 50% more weight to be lifting. I worked that all by myself. Oh. And, uh, 
maybe I should try it again, do it. Do a hundred days. Sit ups, press ups. Four, what's it now? It's May. What, the 16th or 17th? It was the 15th on Wednesday. 16th on Thursday. 17th on Friday, which is today. So if I did a hundred days from now, roughly, just going roughly, it would be the rest of this month, June, July and August. So by the beginning of September, I would have done a hundred days building up the sit-ups and the press-ups to the point where I might look okay. I lost a bit of weight. I don't know. But then there's a big part of me that just cannot be asked to do it. And I've joined a gym. In fact, I joined two gyms. I joined one gym, didn't go for two months. And then I left that and joined another gym. And I've been once in the last, what, five weeks? So, yeah, I'm not... I haven't been that motivated to do it. But I will. Oh yes, I will. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Oh yeah. I will do it. It's just finding the time. Mind you, I do have quite a lot of time. I'm so tired. I was going to tell you about my little adventure, but I didn't get around to it. How did I get onto the subject of popcorning? How did that... A little popcorn adventure turning from a seed into a full-grown popcorn... I always thought the idea of salted popcorn as being grim. But I was wrong. But I still prefer toffee popcorn. But my teeth don't. Which is a shame because it tastes so good. Oh, popcorn. I love popcorn. Candy floss. I had a candy floss, or a bit of a candy floss, back in four years ago. And I first moved in here, and a neighbour downstairs. She was going to this fair at the school, the local school, and I went with her just to have a look around. It was a lovely summer's day, and I didn't know anybody in the area. She was pretty much the first person I'd spoken to, and uh, I thought, whoa, this is good. And I thought, yeah, just thought, hmm possibilities of romance because she got um, she got a candy floss and she gave me some of it well, apparently that's not romantic for everybody I thought it was a romantic gesture but basically she was just being generous because we got to 
what was it? I think there was like this. Like a competition thing where there was a car and you had to guess how many balloons were inside the car. And uh, I think someone said to her, I think she did it and she sort of guessed it and paid a pound. And I think someone said to her, Is your boyfriend want to do it as well? And she replied, He's not my boyfriend. But not in a calm, nice way. It's like it was the biggest insult in the world to her that someone thought that I was her boyfriend. So I kind of figured from that moment on, nope, nothing's going to happen here. And I was right. But uh, that was a reaction. I thought, wow, what have I done? And uh, I thought afterwards, maybe when she offered me some of her candy floss, I should have given it back to her instead of just eating the whole lot. So maybe that, that wasn't a good first impression. Plus, yeah. Farting into my hand and offering it for her to smell, that probably wasn't good either. You know, it's just the little things, isn't it? They think, oh, at the time they seem fine. And then afterwards, like, oh, perhaps I shouldn't have done that. So yeah, so that's the end of another Let Me Bore You To Sleep. Oh, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful session. And uh, I'm going to go and upload this. So you take care of yourselves. And I shall see you another time. Take care. Bye.